Hello, thanks very much for uh, having me. I apologize in advance, this is only my second talk ever, so like if I start to talk like at the speed of light, just like wave at me and I'll slow down. Um, my name is uh, Ivana. Um, I work as an interaction designer here at My Planet, which is one of the uh, sponsors for uh, Ultracom. Um, and I, as soon as I saw the event, I knew that I really wanted to talk here. And I had to look through some of the topic ideas that the conf had listed, and this one uh, really jumped out at me. Um, I like digging into comparisons to see sort of, and like especially at comparisons like this one, and I wanted to see what effects both inclusion and diversity have in our workplaces because the stakes are pretty high given the emotional impact of both of these things and the impact that they can have on self-care. Um, I started wondering if they are, if these two things are mutually exclusive or if we can use them to somehow reinforce each other. And what I like to do sometimes is start with definitions to give us kind of a, a jumping off point. So inclusion, uh, the action or state of including or of being included within a group. So there's no surprises there. Um, diversity, <laughs> we've seen this a lot. Um, the state of being diverse, variety or difference. This could be based on culture, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, anything, anything we perceive as uh, being different. And obviously we all know this. Um, diversity boosts creativity because of all the different approaches. Um, a diverse group, you know, thinks through problems differently, brings up novel solutions, and you know, we can ask interesting questions of each other, each other, excuse me, and challenge each other and build the solutions into ones that are far greater than just the sum of their parts. Um, and diversity needs role models. Um, I'm not here to sort of enumerate all of the failings of Silicon Valley because, you know, I'm sure we're <laughs> and tech companies in general, I'm sure we're pretty familiar with them, and that sort of those homogeneous groups, they tend to reinforce each other and hire people who are like them and kind of, they become very insular. Um, and we are also aware of the fact that we need to provide opportunities for um, minorities to, to, to be role models. Um, as someone who sort of self-learned their way into tech um, and fell kind of ass backwards into a career that I really love. Um, a role model would have been so helpful like to look at someone in a place of power or influence um, that was like me that I could identify with and being like, hey, I can do that. Um, I didn't see a lot of that and it would have been really great. Um, so tech then needs people who are different from the norm to stand up and draw attention to themselves to show that being in their place is possible. Um, we need big organizations to be a part of these movements to provide support for the women and minorities in their ranks to step into the spotlight. Um, and increasingly this is happening, like companies, my own included, um, are encouraging people to step forward and come to events like this one and talk about their experiences, both good and bad. Um, however, um, it is really important that we balance, we're coming back to this now, uh, both inclusion and diversity. Um, because in my opinion, true diversity is only valuable and safe once there is an inclusive foundation. Um, otherwise, self-care can suffer. And this balance actually has a name. It's called optimal distinctiveness theory. I got a degree in psychology, so this is me like <laughs> using it. Um, and optimal identity, um, we like knowing who we are. We like certainty. That certainty makes us happy. Um, and optimal identity en encourages balance between inclu inclusion excuse me, and uniqueness. We have a deep-seated emotional need to be an accepted member of a group or groups. Uh, this is crucial to our identity, but it's easier said than done. Um, but on the other hand, we also want to feel unique enough. We want to be different enough. Um, it's OK to be part of a minority, but we don't want to be constantly aware of being part of that minority. Um, and I really want to sort of draw attention to the italicized part of the definition there, uh, look to. Um, always being looked to can be dangerous um, in a way. Um, the road to hell is paved with like good intentions, but when our employers and others sort of in the tech community encourage us to be role models, they may be actually negatively affecting our self-care because that encouragement can exacerbate, in my case, some imposter syndrome, 
reinforce self-stereotyping and creates pressure to be that representative that you don't necessarily see yourself as. And it's funny that this responsibility rests upon the minority. Um, we end up being what we think people want us to be, and this can affect our self-esteem and our self-image. Uh, it becomes more important sometimes to be a role model than to be ourselves, which is where that sort of where the impact can take place. Uh, so just a few examples, and um, speaking of uh, Scottish thunder, um, this is <laughs> this is this is my wife. Uh, she's Gl she's Glaswegian. Um, I love the accent, but <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, I lived in the UK for a number of years, and while we lived there, she won an award for being the UK's Young Woman Engineer of the Year. She makes fighter jet radars and is like a badass. Um, <laughs> she, I, I don't often know what she's talking about, but it's great. Um, and, but as a result of winning the award, uh, she did a lot of speaking as a result. This is her giving a talk uh, at the Savoy House in London for the Institution of Engineering and Technology to some of the most influential people in STEM in the UK. Um, and that's a DeLorean behind her. Um, that was one of her slides. Um, and, but she did lots of talks in schools to try and get more women and more girls into STEM professions uh, to tell them, yes, you too can build a radar and put it in a fighter jet and watch it fly, and it's great. Um, but, and she loved being a role model for young women, but she, she said to me often that it was exhausting and it was difficult because everyone, with the best of intentions, um, everyone was constantly pointing out what was different about her. Um, and, and that, you know, that can get really, really tiring. Um, and this picture, I don't know if you can see, but that's me there, like in the sort of roots, like the fabulous hat and the mushroom cut. Um, I, I was born actually in the former Yugoslavia. I was born in Bosnia. Um, I was raised in Croatia, actually. Um, and then we moved to Canada. And then eventually I went to Scotland where I met my wife. But this was us at our citizenship ceremony. So I was in the roots. Um, <laughs> I was rep representing, look, come on. Um, but yes, yeah, so, uh, like I have you know, a lot of trouble answering the question, uh, where are you from? Uh, it's kind of my default response is, how much time do you have? Um, does anyone remember this guy? Yeah. <laughs> No, so wh wherever wherever I went, I didn't I didn't want to be the little foreign kid like ever. I just I I always adopted the language or the accent of wherever we're from um, or wherever we we stayed uh, because I just didn't want to. I didn't want to be the the different kid. Like the first thing that I learned was first sort of English word that I sort of assigned meaning to was mum, but it was. Like if I needed to take homework, like homework home, I would say mum because it meant it had to go home to mum. Like it was just, yeah. I, I was always aware that I was foreign, and the reason I'm showing wishbone is, uh, sorry, is because uh, that's how I learned English. Uh, he, because I would watch this little show, and then whatever story, like he was the lead in, I would go and I would get the abridged version of the children's books, and I would read it, and that's how I learned. Um, I played sports, I played hockey, because that's what people do here in Canada, Canadians. <laughs> like, it's just what you do. Um, in Scotland, I played rugby. Um, so any, any way I can find to blend in, uh, that's what I did. Um, I didn't want to be identified uh, as the foreign one. And that kind of, trying to avoid that, that sticks with you. Um, for a long time, I didn't want to be a role model. I didn't want to be diverse. I just wanted to be included. Um, and this desire for inclusion should be taken into account when we ask people to be role models, be it in tech or anything else. Um, oh, there we go. One more time. Um, so this is sort of the center of the, the talk. When should we become role models and what can our sort of tech employers do to, about that? So the short answer is when we're ready to. Um, we can't force people to be role models before they're ready to do so because when we do this, we draw the focus onto that which is different about them. Like, for me, it's, you know, you're a woman, you're gay, you're, and, you know, it's, it's, it can be well-intentioned on behalf of tech companies or workplaces, but it can have the opposite effect. Like, after all, I'm reminded every day that I'm gay, um, that I don't quite fit into people's boxes sometimes. Like, I 
personally, you know, I don't like being shouted at for being in the wrong washroom. <laughs> like, you know, I tell people, like, they say to me, oh, you, this is the women's bathroom. And I go, I know, thank you. Um, <laughs> thanks for pointing it out. Um, yeah, so sometimes I don't want to exacerbate my difference more than people do on a, on a daily basis. Um, so this is what I want to emphasize is that we focus on inclusion before diversity, that tech companies should make employees feel as though they're part of a group before anything else, because doing otherwise can result in a lot of unnecessary stress. We don't necessarily want to be reminded of our differences within our work group, um, be they based in gender, culture, ethnicity, anything else. Um, it is the responsibility of our workplace to make us feel protected. Um, even, yeah, so provide a platform for role models, not an expectation. Um, even, some, even saying something like, we want you to be a role model for other young women um, isn't the right thing to say, um, I don't think. Anyway, uh, something like, we'd like to enable you to be a role model if that's something you're, you're ready to do. Um, that doesn't set out the expectation. Uh, we, they should practice patience. Uh, there should be no pressure. All we can do is tell the stories that brought us to where we are and be okay if it doesn't resonate with everyone because it doesn't have to. Um, and this acceptance takes time. Um, sometimes, like, I know I believe that everyone should somehow relate to your story, otherwise somehow we failed as a role model if, like, one person in the group doesn't, doesn't feel the same way. And this isn't true. It, it, it doesn't have to, and that's okay. Um, encourage people to represent themselves as well, not a group. Because, again, we come back to self-stereotyping um, and that whole um, optimal identity theory. A perceiver will come to see themselves in a way consistent like with stereotypes rather than themselves. So I may drift towards what I think other people want to see when they see a gay woman rather than just talking about my story and how I got here. Um, but, and if I do do that, if I do drift towards that stereotype, it can and has before compromised my identity, my self-esteem and, and my mental health. Um, so yeah, once we're included, we will seek to stand out, or we, we may seek to stand out. Um, because con like for me, constantly being reminded that I was different impacted my image of myself, and that was difficult. Like I never wanted to be like a mentor, a talker, anything to draw attention to myself, like the, the way I'm doing now. <laughs> but, uh, but through support from my wife, my family, um, my work, and just the passage of time, like I'm only now feeling like I have something to say. Um, I feel included enough to share, and that inclusion is integral. Um, jumping straight, like when tech companies jump straight to like diversity, like they miss they miss the point because they just draw attention right to those differences. That's dangerous, and inclusion must come first. Um, we need to allow people to form those optimal identities and prioritize their self care, and this will make them even better role models because then we'll be aware enough of our differences to be proud of them, uh, but protected by the groups that we represent. Um, and I think, you know, we have some way to go in that respect, but um, I look forward to playing my part in it. So thank you very much. I appreciate you listening. Um, I hope so. <laughs>